Hello, and thank you for joining me for Ask Gardener Lynn. So gardening can be a bit tricky, and sometimes just a little bit of help can really turn a troubled garden around. So let's get those gardens on track. Um, our question today comes from Lisa in San Antonio, Texas. She lives in Zone 8. And her question is, how to choose the best tomato variety for her location? Selecting which tomato variety to grow can be a really confusing and daunting task. And if you get the wrong variety, you can have a real tomato disaster. Believe me, I've done it. And then you don't get any tomatoes to eat. So there are over 3,600 varieties of tomatoes out there that I know of, and there's probably even more than that. So there's six things to consider when choosing a tomato variety, and this is kind of the steps that I go through when I'm choosing one. Um, the first step is, what do I want to do with this tomato? Do I want to eat it fresh? Do I want to preserve it? Do I want to grow for production? Do I just want to grow some to give away? So decide, you know, what is going to happen with this tomato? And for me, I actually fit in a couple different categories. I grow for production, but I also give some away and I also preserve some. So think about that to start with. And number two is what characteristics am I looking for in my tomato plant? Um, is it just flavor? Am I looking for split resistance? Uh, do I need one that's disease resistant? Or do I need one that just produces a lot of tomatoes? So that's your second consideration. The third one is how long is my growing season? How many frost-free days do I have? So tomato varieties tend to come in long season and short season. So uh, tomatoes typically, by the time you get them transplanted into the garden, your first production on the short season will be 60 to 70 days. On the long season, they can be upwards of 100 or 120 days before they start producing. So you really want to look at your package and you want to look at your growing season, see how many frost-free days you have so you know what varieties to select. Uh, the other consideration is what I call a split season. So in some areas, it gets way, way too hot in the summertime if the, the night temperatures are 80, 85 degrees at night. Sometimes the tomato plants won't bloom or pollinate, and then you get into a situation where they're not putting on any tomatoes. So you can do what's called a split season. You can start early, grow a short season variety, and then you can plant another batch and, and grow those in the fall. Depending on how hot you are in the summer, you may want to go to a split season. So the timing of when you plant the plants is also super critical. Um, when you're starting your plants, you can start them, you know, eight to 10 weeks ahead of your last frost date in the house and, and get you some starter plants. You can also purchase those at the store. Um, but you want to put your tomato plants out when you are past your danger of frost. So what you want to do is look up your zone, find when your average last frost date is in the spring, and then you want to look at the 10-day forecast. So if my average last frost date is May 1st, I want to look on May 1st at the 10-day forecast, and if I don't see any frost in that, then it's usually safe to plant. But if I see a frost on like the 5th, then what I will do is I will look on the 5th and then see if I got a 10-day window where there's no frost. And that just gives the plants a chance and the little plants going out are very tender and they can freeze very easily. I also have covers that are ready to go on the plants just in case the weather changes and um, I have to protect them. Okay, the next thing is hybrid versus non-hybrid. And this is a question that I get a lot. Um, when you buy a hybrid plant, a lot of them have disease resistant packages that come with them. So they've been tested against diseases that kill tomatoes and they're found to be fairly resistant to these diseases. Um, the other thing that you find with the hybrids is that they have a lot of production. Um, they are bred to make a lot of tomatoes and so that helps on the production end. Um, 
the non-hybrids they can get accustomed to your area and the diseases in your area but when they're first coming in you're first starting a non-hybrid plant there's a pretty good chance that there could be a disease that could wipe that out for you so that gets a little frustrating um, also i noticed that the non-hybrids the production tends to be kind of low and the tomatoes split quite a bit for us here because that's one of the problems that we have um, now, the, the myth is that non-hybrids have better flavor than hybrids, and overgrowing tomatoes over the last 34 years, I've really have found that it's the soil nutrients that creates the flavor and not the plant variety. So I can grow a hybrid tomato and get excellent flavor on it if I have good nutrients, I have trace minerals in the soil, and I vine ripen that tomato. So. It's okay to pick a hybrid, especially for the disease package in the production, and you can still get flavor. Okay, number five is determinate versus indeterminate. All right, so a determinate plant is one that comes up, blossoms a lot, puts on its fruit, and then you harvest the fruit and it's basically done. It doesn't cycle again. An indeterminate will start with um, one set of fruit and then it'll put another one on the next week and another one the next week and it's indeterminate it'll just keep going on and on and on um, I've heard of tomato plants that are seven years old and continue to do that so you want to decide if you want a determinate versus an indeterminate so reasons to pick a, a determinate vine is if you want to pick everything all at once let's say you're going to uh, can tomatoes and you want 50 pounds and so you don't want two pounds this week two pounds next week two pounds the week after you want those plants to really put out and so a determinant variety would be really good for that if you have a super short season a determinant variety is also good for that uh, the the determinant varieties will ripen over a three to four week period so you do have a couple of weeks in there whereas like my indeterminates they go on they go on forever i mean we're picking on them for 24 weeks Another thing to consider is, are you going to trellis them? So uh, determinant varieties, they come up, they're bushy, you can usually control them in a tomato cage, and they don't really need to be trellised. The indeterminate varieties, we do use a professional trellising system where you keep just one stem going, you cut off all the suckers, and as that plant ripens along, we can lower the plant down and then bring the growing tip back up. So we have about five feet of the plant uh, in production at a time. And it's a really great way to do that. The determinants do not like that system at all. They want multiple branches, all kinds of flowers. So we don't grow them on a trellis. When I trellis the tomatoes, I can get so much more production per square foot. So in my main crops, I like to trellis them because I can keep that production high and control the plants. All right, number six is how many plants should I put in? And I know that this is not part of selecting the variety, but this comes up so much because people are like, well, I don't know how many to plant. So if you're going with an indeterminate, you can get one to two pounds per plant per week if that plant is in really good production. Uh, a determinate variety, like I say, you're gonna pick it over a three to four week time period, I would say you're gonna get maybe six to eight pounds per plant per picking. So the overall picking on that plant, if it was six pounds times four, that'd be like 24 pounds per plant. So that really will help you decide, well, do I need three plants or do I need 300 plants? So that's just a little bonus information to help you decide how many plants to start. Okay, now with all that information in mind, for Lisa in her zone eight, her biggest concerns will be disease resistance and the heat. So she should consider a split season because of that heat in the middle of the summer is so hot and it really uh, can take her tomato plants down. So she wants to start her early season tomatoes in February. They're gonna go out in the garden in March and then she can start a new batch in late July and plant those out in September and have tomatoes through the fall. And the short season will do that for her. She also needs a disease resistant variety. So I would also buy hybrids for this 
and use the hybrids for both seasons. Now for my farm, we raise 400 tomato plants a year to, to supply our CSA and several local restaurants. And we live in zone five and I can grow tomatoes all the way through the summer. So my biggest considerations for the varieties that I want is one, are they split resistance? Because we have temperature swings of 50 degrees every day. It'll be 50 degrees in the morning and by late afternoon it's you know 90 to 100 degrees it's been over 100 degrees so we have this big swing it tends to uh, split the tomatoes number two is production i need some volume so that i can pay all the bills around here so being a commercial operation i production has to be pretty high on my list otherwise um, i have to go get a day job and that just wouldn't do um, number three is a good disease package because I have a long season, so outdoors I'm in zone five, I have a short season there, but in my greenhouses, I have a long season. I have um, easily 120 to 150 days. So I want a, a plant with a good disease package because I'm gonna ask that plant to be around for a long time. And I have high humidity in the greenhouses. So I'm also wanting that disease package to help with the humidity. So I'm looking for a hybrid that has good volume that is split resistant. All right, so the type of tomato that I want, uh, I want indeterminate for my main crops, and those are gonna go on the trellises. We actually can grow those plants one foot apart. We grow them in 45 feet long rows. And so the indeterminate with a professional trellising works perfect for me. I do grow a determinate variety for my short season. And the reason that I do that is Right in the very beginning of the season, uh, we have tomatoes ripening end of May, 1st of June. And in our area, the outdoor gardens don't ripen until end of July, 1st of August. So I have this beautiful, it's almost like an eight week time period where I'm kind of the tomato queen because I'm the only one with tomatoes in the area. So I use the determinant variety, a very short season, to create just a bumper crop of tomatoes. I want those you know, extra pounds per week early in the season before my determinants come on, or my indeterminants come on before my main season, because I have humongous sales. And when they come and they buy, they come for the tomatoes, they go home with other things that we grow here on the farm. So I use that to get people in the door very, very early. Okay, so the varieties that we grow. Uh, Valley Girl is a hybrid determinant crack resistant short season for my early sales. Then we pull out the plants mid season when the early tomato craze is over and my main crops are producing. Uh, we grow one called Estvia. That's a 70 day crack resistant hybrid indeterminate for trellising and that is our main red one for our main crop for the whole season. We grow Chef's Choice Orange that's our large yellow slicing tomato. It is an indeterminate, and that is also for our main season crop. The next one is Sakura, and this is a split resistant cherry tomato. For us to sell, um, people love to buy little bunches of cherry tomatoes, and also we snack on those while we're working. So, you know, you go by the plant and you, you pop a few in your mouth. So we have to have a few cherry tomatoes around here. And then the last one we grow is called Granadero, and it is aroma type, and this is for making spaghetti sauce for our CSA customers. We also make homemade ketchup, and we use Granadero for that. It is a indeterminate hybrid, crack resistant, and it's also resistant to blossom end rot, which row of tomatoes tend to get a lot, a lot of blossom end rot. So Granadero is our aroma type that we pick. If you have a garden question that you would like answered, please click on the link below this video and submit your question. And if you'd like to learn more about tomatoes and watching us grow a whole season of tomatoes week by week for 33 weeks, then sign up for the High Performance Garden Show. Uh, the show follows the High Performance Garden from seed to putting it to bed at the end of the season. And this is the best insider's look at watching everything we do with the tomato plants week after week, all season long. And we'll even show you the professional trellising system for your tomatoes in that garden show. Now the show is free 
it's online and you can watch it anytime. So you just need to go to our website, thelivingfarm.org, and uh, click on the High Performance Garden Show. There's also a link below that will take you directly there. So I want to thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel for more high performance gardening information and more Ask Lynn uh, questions that will be answered. All right, until next time, may your garden be easy, fun, productive, and always organic.